live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. TT Line's CEO is the latest to announce his resignation in the wake of continuous public backlash over delayed Spirit of Tasmania vessels and a place to berth them. The company grilled in a hearing today with fears the project will fall even further behind what's already expected. As a new Spirit of Tasmania vessel gets set to arrive later this year, the company responsible for it, TT Line, will see its CEO set sail. I was notified by Mr Bernard Dwyer, our CEO, that uh, he um, wished to resign from the company. He's the third big name to step down. After former chairman Michael Granger was asked to leave, while Michael Ferguson handballed his infrastructure portfolio to the Premier, all during the public hearing into the Spirits project. Investigating how cost and time blowouts associated with vessels and infrastructure were able to get as bad as they did. We're a ferry company. We are not an infrastructure, port infrastructure company. TT Line telling the inquiry that delays to vessels were influenced by a pandemic, Russia-Ukraine war and state election. Adding a new berth was held back because it couldn't conduct geotechnical works. How long do you reasonably think it would take now to deliver that infrastructure it's that TT eight... Line is responsible for? It was an 18-month program. The redevelopment, critical for docking the new ships, isn't expected to be ready until after the new ships arrive. Labor claiming what TT Line's saying doesn't match what the former infrastructure minister told the inquiry. Update the public record and be truthful and clear up what is becoming, quite frankly, a mess. That's why we've uh, intervened uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, and look this project will be a, a significant for uh, Tasmania. The hearing will return at the end of the month with the Premier and now Infrastructure Minister set to appear alongside the Department of State Growth. TT Line's former chair Michael Granger will also front the committee after vowing to set the record straight after he resigned. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmanian News. A woman is facing several charges over a single vehicle crash in March which claimed the life of a young boy and injured another child. She'd been driving on Bridport Road in Lefroy in the early hours of the morning when she lost control and smashed into trees. The 25-year-old Georgetown woman will front court in November on charges including allowing a child under four to be unrestrained and driving under the influence of a prescribed illicit drug. The state government is continuing to provide financial support to those affected by last week's severe weather. It's good news for residents living in New Norfolk's caravan park after it was flooded, forcing them to find somewhere else to live. This caravan has been home for Wendy and Kevin for more than three years. They spent the last 18 months of those in New Norfolk's caravan park. That was until it became inundated with water during last week's flooding emergency. Biggest can't be choosers, we had to move. After spending a week at a nearby football oval, the couple have had to move once again, this time to the Glenorchy showgrounds. We want to go back to the caravan park and that was our home. The same as um, a few others that were there that had to move out. Wendy and Kevin have both received grants of $250 each. While they're thankful... Yeah, I might go towards paying some, uh, uh, paying some rent for here. Um, might even buy myself a beer. <laughs> might don't drink. Others who have also had to move believe it doesn't go far enough. It's nowhere near enough, as far as I'm concerned. Not to replace what we've already lost. Yep. Goes Not really, no. The Premier today announcing further support, waiving tip fees for those affected. It's been uh, very tough. It's been very tough for people out there in extreme conditions. It comes as TAS Network continues their efforts to restore power to more than 1,400 homes. Across government and uh, we'll ensure uh, that uh, all Tasmanians and vulnerable Tasmanians uh, are checked on uh, to ensure their safety and indeed to ensure they are well provided for. For Wendy and Kevin, they don't know when they'll be able to return to New Norfolk, holding out hope it'll be only a couple of weeks. 
Lily Thompson, 7 Tasmania News. A decline in residential housing construction looks set to prolong the state's housing crisis. Master Builders Tasmania says new home building starts have dropped, making it harder to deliver on housing stock expected under the National Housing Accord. Replicating the hive of building activity reminiscent of the 90s is key to Tasmania achieving its housing expectations. Master Builders Tasmania says the state is seriously behind its residential housing construction targets set under the National Housing Accord. We were expecting to see 25,600 homes built in Tasmania over the next five years. Um, our estimate is actually we'll only be seeing close to 14,500 homes built. The situation exacerbating the state's housing crisis. Right now it is expensive to build a house and it's hard for a first home buyer to get a loan. So I think we've got to look at building more high density homes closer to the city and close to bus routes. John Faulkner has been building homes around Launceston for decades and says a lack of trades is also contributing to the problem. And it's not just the carpentry trade, the building trade. We need a lot of um, plasterers and painters and tilers and sub-trades. The biggest stumbling block is Tasmania's capacity is limited when it comes to ramping up large volumes of higher density homes. There's planning issues. Um, there's the fact that to date Homes Tasmania, who's responsible for our social and uh, affordable housing stock, have not had uh, a big focus on this. But he believes there's still an opportunity for Tasmania to catch up in the long term. Social and affordable housing, we've got a very clear target of 10,000 homes uh, and we will deliver that. Melinda Ogden, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania is a step closer to making cashless pokies a reality as public consultation opens on the nation leading reforms. The compulsory card based system would cap losses to $100 a day and $5,000 a year at venues statewide. There's still no date set for the introduction of the scheme which is already overdue but the public can have its say on the Treasury website until October 18. Bike riding enthusiasts are gearing up for Signet's annual cycling festival. First launched in 2022, this year the event is focusing on providing fun and engaging activities for the whole family, as well as more serious races for those keen to participate. And our 60 kilometre Hell of the South race, which also happens to be state road championships for the last time on this course. And this one really caters to everyone. There's a shorter course and the longer course. The roads are beautiful. Organisers are hoping to attract more than 240 participants across all events and it begins on November 9. Key industry stakeholders have attended a community roundtable to discuss how best to assist regional communities impacted by last week's severe weather events. Leaders from a range of industries including housing and hospitality were included in the meeting. The Premier also addressing the group ahead of handing down the state budget on Thursday. Tasmanian unions have banded together to voice grave concerns ahead of this week's state budget, worried about the impact of potential cuts to the public sector workforce. Leaders calling for those on the ground to be put first after a report claimed Tasmanian public sector wages have fallen behind those interstate. We are having trouble getting workers to come into the Tassie public sector and stay in it because they are not offered competitive wages. So, for example, for, for, for a nurse and midwife, if they want to um, be paid more, they, they could go to Queensland right now and get paid an, an extra 10000 just for, for turning up. The government says its state budget will see upgrades to hospitals and employ more frontline staff, such as doctors and nurses. Lauderdale fans don't have happy memories of facing North Launceston in September, having lost three consecutive grand finals from 2017 to 2019. But after knocking over the reigning premiers on the weekend, there's one more team standing in the way of correcting that record, still needing to topple the ruse to book their ticket to the last TSL decider. We're up for the challenge. Our confidence is high. Um, we know what Clarence bring. Um, they're a very, very good, good side. and They play this ground very well, so... Um, We'll definitely put some measures in place to sort of limit what they're able to do on this ground, on a bigger ground. North Hobart celebrating a third straight SFLW Premiership. 
a goal in the dying seconds, lifting them to a grand final victory over Kimbra. Like a Seljak winners, Glen Orkey have another cup in the clubhouse now, having secured the NPL title in a nail-biter against second place Devonport. All the Knights needed to seal the race was a draw, which they managed despite the strikers' best efforts. Yeah, they certainly had their chances. I thought we defended the 18-yard box really well. Angus has had three or four really big opportunities to make some saves, and he's done that. But, you know, over the moon to have finished with the, with the double this year, the lack of Seljak Cup and then the league title. The stellar season is a good feather in coach James Sherman's cap as he parts ways with the club. He may be heading overseas for his next venture, but we'll have to watch this space. Import Craig Swords leant from the court as the Jackies attempted a fight back tonight following a fairly lacklustre start to their last NBL Blitz game on the Gold Coast. Allowing the 36ers to reach a 20-5 lead early in the first quarter, the Jackies have been playing catch-up all evening. Sword returning to the court in the fourth to sit behind Milton Doyle as Tasmania's high scorers. The margin blowing out though before the final buzzer a short time ago. Adelaide has won that one 96-64. Tasmanians Jacob Furphy and Nash Walker will play the FIBA Under-18 Asia Cups final with Team Australia. Remaining undefeated so far after a semi-final win over hosts Jordan, the Aussies face the Kiwis in the final early tomorrow morning. Good evening Hobart, Launceston, Devonport and Burnie all 15 degrees today. Friendly beaches out high with 17, St Helens 16, Bushy Park and King Island 15, Flinders Island, Smithton, Lowhead and Grove 14 degrees and Strawn a chilly top of 12. Partly cloudy conditions today, most of the cloud did stick to the west coast. Um, North Boomerang in the southwest, the top fall of rain today with 15 millimetres out of that. A trough brought cloud to New South Wales and Queensland, another trough has cloud over the WA coast. Low cloud under a high sits over South East Australia. Tomorrow the high tracks over New South Wales as the trough to the west moves over central areas, a front position south of the bite. West northwest winds at 20 knots over the east but quite strong over the remaining waters reaching 35 knots over the southwest in the afternoon. So we do have a gale warning that's been issued for waters between South East Cape and Low Rocky Point, a strong wind warning for the central west coast, waters east of Flinders Island, the south east coast and the southwest lakes. Also the minor flood warnings uh, have now been downgraded uh, for all the rivers that were affected last week. Forecast for tomorrow, 17 for Hobart and Cloudy, 16 for Adventure Bay, Taralea a shower or two and 13 degrees. Launceston tomorrow a top of 15 with a shower or two, Devonport the same and Bridport the same. Burnie expecting 15 as well, a cloudy day, showery for Strawn, 15 the maximum, 14 for Marawar. St Helens tomorrow 17 and partly cloudy, Swansea 18 degrees and 16 the top on Flinders Island with a shower or two. On Wednesday, showers over the west and north extending statewide during the day. Mostly fine on Thursday apart from a shower over the west and on Friday, showers creeping across the state again with snow to 700 metres. Partly cloudy in Perth, Adelaide and Melbourne tomorrow. Temperatures in the low 20s. Fine in Sydney, 22 degrees there. Showers up the Queensland coast, but a sunny 35 in Darwin. Bit of cloud about at the moment and currently 12 degrees in Hobart, Launceston and Devonport. That completes our weather for Monday, Kim. Hey, thank you, ma'am. See you tomorrow.